Welcome back to another Amped Authenticate update video. In today's update, we'll be taking a look at our new shadows filter and how we can use shadows within an image as a way of detecting potential tampering. We will also take a look at how we've improved our camera source identification within Amped Authenticate. So firstly, I'm going to introduce our new shadows filter. So we have a shadows filter because when fake images are created in Photoshop or other software, the hardest thing for a person to fake is the behavior of the shadow in relation to the other shadows that are already present in the image. So the basic idea of how the filter works is that we're going to be able to select each shadow that's within the image and it will help us analyze where the light source is coming from. And then if there's a shadow that is behaving in a way unexpected from that light source, it will flag that up as an inconsistency. So I have this image loaded into Amped Authenticate and I want to determine if it's been tampered with. So you can see we've got a table and on there there's numerous objects and they're all cast in shadows. So first let's locate our shadows filter. So we've created a new group called Geometrical Analysis and we will find the shadows filter there. So I click the rest of the filters in Amped Authenticate. Once I select that filter, our filter settings will appear on the right. So let's take a closer look at those filter settings. So in this first section that's highlighted, this is where we'll get the list of our casted shadows that we've selected. The next section will be the list of any attached shadows that we've selected. So let's quickly define the difference between a cast shadow and attached shadow. So a cast shadow are those projected by some object on the ground or onto another object. And then the attached shadows are those projected by an object onto itself, normally resulting in shading over the object. So when we're looking at our image, we can see that we're going to be looking at the casted shadows. Finally, this bottom section of our filter settings here, we have some displaying controls that we'll take a look at. And then we also have information about the system feasibility. And we'll take a closer look at that as we begin to add our shadows. So we've made adding the shadows straightforward. I currently have casted shadows selected and I've selected a point on this casted shadow. And then I've made this wedge to say where this casted shadow has come from. The idea is to make the wedges as narrow as possible, but in situations where you're unsure whereabouts on this object this shadow uh, is related to, you can increase that wedge size. Once we start adding these shadow constraints, you'll notice that in the top right in our filter settings that we discussed earlier, they'll start to appear there. Each shadow constraint will have a tick box next to it, so you can turn them off and on. As I mentioned earlier, we also have our display settings. So if you've added a constraint and you're unable to see the wedge, you can tick the box here. And by doing so, you'll now be able to see the wedges on your image. So now we're going to keep adding cast shadow constraints for several objects within our scene. And each cast shadow constraint defines a wedge in which inside the light source should be contained. Therefore, the shadow filter is going to continuously check whether there exists an intersection region that is common to all the wedges that we're creating. And if there is one, the system is going to continue to say feasible in our settings, uh, which means that all the selected constraints are consistent with each other. If there's a cast shadow that isn't consistent, the system will become unfeasible. And it's telling us that there's at least one inconsistent shadow within our image. So if we check our current system state now, we can see that we've got a system feasible. So let's keep adding the rest of these shadows. You may have noticed that we've got this yellow cone that's appeared. So this yellow cone is giving us an indication where the light source for the shadow should be. So currently we still have a system feasible system state. So all these shadows we've added so far have got an intersection that match. So let's take a look at what happens when we start adding the constraints for the orange. You can see our wedge is completely off compared to that yellow cone. And if we look at the system state now, it's ended up going to system unfeasible. So we can clearly see that when we added this orange, it didn't match up with the intersection of all the other shadows. So this system unfeasible is definitely indicating that the shadow of the orange is a problem. In some cases, it might be harder to determine which shadow is causing the inconsistency so we have this show minimum unfeasible set button within our display settings. 
if we look at the top right of our filter settings after we selected that button, you can see that it's just left ticked three shadows which is causing the system to become unfeasible. In this video I've only covered the tip of the iceberg of what we can do with the shadows filter and all the settings and the analysis that's behind it. Uh, but we'll leave all the further details to the program manual that's within Amped Authenticate. The next main feature of this update is for our PRNU filter. So we've improved our PRNU identification. So we did this by we improved the matching algorithm so to make localization possible under more challenging cropping scenarios. So in our last main update to Amped Authenticate, we implemented the ability so that cropped images could be used during the PRNU identification. And during this update, we're just making that more optimized so that now, even if the cropping is quite extreme, we'll still get these positive matches in the PRNU identification. So we validated this new implementation against the vision data set, and we had really good results coming out of this. With a PCE threshold of 60, we were able to obtain 92% true positive rate for a mod set 0.2% false positive rate. So for this reason, the recommended PCE threshold now is 60, whereas in the previous versions, we had it set as a default of 45. But we don't like to change the user settings automatically. So if you're updating from a previous release, we recommend that you manually raise the threshold to 60 from the program options. So to do this, we can go to the view tab and click onto program options. And then you want to find the threshold for PRNU camera identification. And in there at the moment, it will have a value of 45. So if we change that to 60 and then click apply, after clicking apply, your new settings will be saved in your Amped Authenticate program. Thank you again guys for joining us on this update video. I hope you enjoyed the new features and that you're looking forward to using them in the future.